It was September 1975. And I just started my first job as a paralegal with a large law firm in Washington, D.C. For context, there was no Google. Phones were neither smart nor mobile. <laughs> and computers filled rooms, not desks. The Vietnam War had just ended. Motown was big, and MASH was the number one television show in America. The law firm had just signed on to use a cutting-edge legal research tool. Now, you may have heard of it because it was developed right here in Dayton, Ohio. Lexus. Not a car. <laughs> Lexus was a single-purpose computer connected to a full-text database of laws, regulations, and court decisions. You used it by typing in searches via a keyboard. Think Google searching for cavemen. <laughs> Almost immediately, the law firm recognized three things. The technology had promise. All their lawyers were men. And none of them could type. <laughs> so they posted a position for the Lexus girl. Because back then, men didn't type. Women, or as we were called then, girls, did. And since I'd been a secretary before I became a paralegal, I could type really fast, and I got the job. Now, I also got an office. Well, actually, the Lexus terminal got an office. <laughs> I got to sit next to the Lexus terminal. Every day, lawyers would come in, and they'd ask for my help in figuring out the searches that I then typed into the Lexus. After a few months, I went to see my boss. I loved my job, but frankly, it just wasn't that hard. So I asked her, are the lawyers I'm working with just not that bright? <laughs> or, or what am I missing? And she looked at me and smiled and said, well, have you ever thought about becoming an attorney? That was a life-changing moment because no one had ever asked me that. Frankly, there was nothing in my life up to that point that would ever have led me to believe that becoming a lawyer was a possibility for me. A secretary, yes. A paralegal, uh-huh. A lawyer, not so much. But if it was, a possibility, that is. I could combine my passion for problem solving with a measure of economic security. And for a woman like me in the 1970s, that could be a win-win. So I went to law school, and I graduated in 1980. I took a job as an associate at the bottom of the ladder. And for the next few years, I worked really, really hard to become a good lawyer while making coffee, making copies, picking up lunches, picking up dry cleaning for my male colleagues. I quickly realized that economic power, having clients, was and still is the great equalizer in a law firm. So I decided to become a business getter. Now, my business getting skills didn't really take off until after I'd had my son. In 1994, I was working on a legal brief or memo for a court case. And I went into labor. I had my son six weeks early. I remember calling the senior attorney the next morning and having to apologize for having had my son early. Because obviously, I hadn't had time to finish the brief. So I asked him, what do you think? Can we ask the court for an extension? Well, when are you going to be out of the hospital? Tomorrow, Saturday? Oh, that shouldn't be a problem. The brief's not due till Wednesday. You'll have plenty of time. <laughs> and I finished that brief on time.
But in that same moment, I resolved to never be in that position again, powerless. I, I took the last money we had, and I hired a really awesome marketing coach. The goal was to build my own book of business, my own clients. Now, she was intense, and I struggled every week to finish the homework she gave me. Being a new mother, a wife, a practicing attorney, and dealing with a two-hour-a-day commute already took more time and energy than I had. Even more frustrating was that most of what she was telling me seemed to be common sense, and I wasn't getting it. So finally, one day, I have to tell you, I lost it. I shouted at her and said, when am I going to start seeing results? And she calmly looked at me and said, when you start believing that you're the lawyer the client needs, why should they trust you when you don't even trust yourself? Wow, that was another life-changing moment. So in the only time I had to myself, that commute to and from work, I found the power inside to believe in me, and then how to project it out. I came to believe that if I could keep potential clients captive long enough, they'd have to see that I was someone they could trust. In fact, many of my clients, a lot of whom I've had for over 20 years, appreciate the multitasking, nurturing, pragmatic way that I approach all their legal issues. In other words, I use skills so often and traditionally associated with women. So, to reach out and keep these clients, potential clients, captive long enough to win them over, I started giving speeches and presentations on anything. But there was this one legal organization that gave continuing legal education. They did it on three-hour sessions of all different topics in the law. Up until then, they'd only used men practicing lawyers. So I pestered the director to give me a shot. And one afternoon, he called. Hey, kiddo. That's what he always called me. Hey, kiddo. The guy first thing tomorrow morning just canceled. Do you want the slot? Yeah, I want the slot. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> it didn't matter. I stayed up all night learning it. And when I arrived the next morning, ready to go out, the director walked up to me. He said, kiddo, are you scared? Yeah, I'm scared. And he said, well, if you screw this up, and I have to tell you he used a more vivid verb, <laughs> I'm going to reach down your throat, rip out your tonsils, and feed them back to you. And with that, he walked out onto the stage to introduce me. <laughs> Wisely, I did not stop him to explain that my tonsils had been removed in 1957. <laughs> Instead, I went out there and I did it. I was right. This was my place. And once I found my brand, my comfort niche, companies and organizations did start to come to me to ask me to represent them. And today, I represent everything from small businesses to the United Nations and everything in between. I built a reputation, and I am a rainmaker. Now, although my, my career has had a lot of challenges, whenever possible, I try to use humor to make my point. For example, I was working in the DC office of an Ohio-based law firm. Until then, their winter holiday tradition had been for the lawyers, who all of whom had been men up to that point, to have a formal dinner in an exclusive gentleman's club, finishing with brandy and cigars. No spouses, no support staff, no children, no women. Well, with my arrival and that of another woman attorney and a woman office manager, they decided they'd keep the formal dinner, but they'd change the location to a senior partner's home. I remember groaning inwardly when I got the invitation. It said, cocktail attire or black tie. 
The last thing I wanted to do was to dress up in frilly cocktail attire to spend more time with my work colleagues and without my family. So I decided to make a legally literal point. That night, when we arrived and the senior partner opened the door, he took one look at the three women standing on his front step and yelled, what is the meaning of this? And I said with more calm than I felt, well, the invitation said cocktail attire or black tie. <laughs> we simply wore the black tie. The other male attorneys thought it was hilarious, and the next year's holiday party was all lawyers, all staff, all families, point made. Now, I have had a long and truly wonderful career. I am lucky. I found a firm that values me for the contributions I bring. And I have a team that makes me proud every day. I have become a rainmaker. But I have to tell you, I have worked really, really, really hard. Looking back, I realized that it was my own ignorance that made me think I could even do these things. I didn't realize that I would face gender bias at every turn. Probably because back then, it wasn't called gender bias. It was called, honey, this is just the way things are. <laughs> Looking back, if I'd known then what I know now, I'd like to think I'd still take the same path. Certainly, it's much easier today for women to pursue a career in law. Although, women lawyers still struggle to become rainmakers. So my advice to them is to be true to yourself, to find that power inside to believe in you, to give yourself permission to fail, but never to give up. Look, believing in my own self-worth is what's kept me centered and steadily moving forward all these years. And if they do that, we will get to a point where gender bias is an obsolete term. And on that day, there won't be any women lawyers. There will just be lawyers.